pretty safe to say that the global pandemic has affected people in a variety of different ways. However, overarchingly, it's been somewhat of a collective trauma, not just for a nation, but across the globe. Thankfully, there will come a time when the pandemic abates. So what does the future look like tomorrow? How are individuals and businesses planning to change? And what are the lessons that need to be learned to drive our society going forward? My name's Neil. And my name's Peter. And this is the Purpose Made podcast, part of Purpose Made. And we're here to educate and support people and their businesses about post-pandemic change. So without further ado, the following podcast provides an insight from real people from a variety of different backgrounds about how the pandemic has uniquely affected them. So sit back, relax, and we do hope you enjoy. My name's Laura Foster. I live in Newcastle upon Tyne with my family, my husband and my my two daughters. I run an animal welfare charity based in Ireland. During the pandemic, I've learned that certainly amongst my friends and family, it seems like there's kind of two types of people really. There's those who found this whole experience as long as they've maintained their health and the, and their jobs, of course, there's those who've sort of, I wouldn't go so far as say enjoyed the whole experience, but they've taken the opportunity to kind of almost hibernate at home and to just settle into the, the kind of COVID routine. And I think in many ways, those people will possibly find it harder to come out the other side of all this and come blinking into, into the light of the normal world again. And there are others amongst us who have climbed the walls within a fairly short space of time and really, really missed the external interaction with people and, and with new places and experiences. And I'm I'm definitely in that latter category. My name's Sarah Preston. I'm originally from Manchester, but I'm currently living in London and I work at Imperial College. During the pandemic, I have learned that it's okay to be by yourself. And at the moment, I live in my own flat um, and I've moved during the pandemic. And at first I thought I was going to be lonely or I'd be in my own head too much. But actually, you become your own kind of best friend and spending time alone is just as beneficial as spending time with people. You get to appreciate yourself a little bit more. My name's Peter Bell. I'm an author and co-founder of Purpose Made and a dad living in Newcastle. I've learned about myself during the pandemic that I need routine. Prior to lockdown, I would go to the gym every day with the gyms closed due to lockdown restrictions. This has had a negative effect on my health and mental well-being. So I think to counter that, I've sought new layers of routine to help provide focus, be that regular dog walks or spending time with my son. Hi, my name's Dan Allison. I'm a biology teacher of 13 years and currently live in Solihull with my partner. I'm originally from the southeast of England. I guess what I've learned is that communication really is the key to kind of healthy well-being. You've just got to talk to the people around you about how you're feeling and generally listen, I think, to how they're feeling. I think I've learned really not to judge others and also the fact that this pandemic has had such an impact on people in so many different ways. Just because I'm comfortable with one thing doesn't mean that someone I'm engaging with feels the same. Just because my experience of the pandemic is one experience, it doesn't mean that who I'm engaging with is going to have that mirrored thought as well. So I guess that that's probably the thing that I've really learned um, is about talking and listening properly. I adjusted to lockdown by... From the very beginning, I made a clear routine and being a teacher, I wrote it up on a board because especially in lockdown one, it was such an unknown um, and no one knew what the future held. So I just knew that I needed to create a routine. I still had to um, to teach, although it wasn't online face to face. I still had to, to get up, set work for those students at home. Um, and I also wanted to make sure that I had a balance between work and well-being because I know that I would just end up spending longer and longer at the computer working. Um, And so it was really important that in my schedule, I had plenty of time away from the computer and focusing on wellbeing activities. Um, And the weather was lovely. So that involved kind of reading, exercise, or just sitting out in the sun with a cup of coffee was really important for me. 
Um, I did struggle, however, most during the school holidays and my schedule went out of the window. And that's when I found it really, really difficult. My routine was disrupted and it had quite a negative impact on me. And that's how I knew that I kind of needed that routine. And that's how I adjusted to being in lockdown. My name is Ryan Dollard. I'm a journalist with ITV Border and I live in Carlisle with my dog Poppy usually. But during lockdown number three, I've moved back in with my parents in Brampton. I think I dramatically dropped my standard of what made it a good day. I think trying to focus on looking forward to uh, a couple of glasses of wine at night or something nice for tea or a sunny day. I, I remember certainly through the first couple of lockdowns, it would give my mood a huge lift if the weather was nice because you could get out for your exercise and enjoy it so much more in the sunshine, in in the beautiful scenery we've got round here. So, yes, I think um, by lowering my expectations and just trying to take it one day at a time, really, I think just knocking them off the list, I think the other thing that helped is I don't think we had any idea that we'd still be doing this a year on. So I think that probably helped by we, we didn't look at... The, the the long picture we all assume just keep trucking on keep trying to to get through it and and just take things one day at a time i've adjusted during lockdown by apart from the obvious just not doing any of the things that you would perhaps really like to do on a daily or weekly basis um i've cut back on my alcohol consumption i found that very helpful in terms of my um, my mood and my ability to sleep and to just generally sort of feel brighter um, about everything on a, on a day-to-day basis. My name is Catherine Wildman. I'm a copywriter, lecturer and creative director of Hayden Gray Copywriting Agency. I live in North Shields with my daughter. I have a son away at university and... I'm the mother of one fish who I'm very good at forgetting to feed. I adjusted during lockdown by mm, sleeping. No, I adjusted during lockdown by stopping drinking alcohol. Actually, that's been the biggest change. Trying to get outside every day and staying in touch with people. So much more phone calls while walking than texts with people to try and connect, having really good long conversations with my sister, trying to keep in touch with my mum and tightening the circle quite a lot, actually. You can only keep a hold of so many people and you can only do what you can do. And I stopped beating myself up for not being able to be there for everybody. That was a big thing. My name is Sheila Sammy. I am a nurse practitioner currently working in Newcastle-upon-Tyne Hospital Trust um, during the pandemic and for the last 39 years. Uh, And obviously adjusting to COVID-19, working ways um, around difficult situations, manipulating wards, working in areas that we wouldn't normally work of. This is one of the things that I think the NHS and certainly I have adjusted to, um, working around things that we'd not normally work around, so much as just even putting on PPE. When we first started, that was quite hard. But now as we come into the end of it, it's, it's just routine for us and it's something that we find that we can do all the time and we've got much quicker at it. That's one of the things that we've certainly adjusted to. One of the most appreciative moments that I've had is how people react when I give them a COVID-19 vaccination. I'm part of the vaccination programme and one of the things that I remember the most is a porter who I'd worked with for several, several years in our trust and he got his first vaccination for COVID-19 and he was just so appreciative of everything that we had done. He just broke it down into tears when I was putting the needle in his arm and it wasn't the fact that the needle hurt, um, it was the fact that he was just so thankful 
for us to give him the vaccine. And that was just a major, major thing for me. I was took my time with him. And even though he was a colleague, he was just so upset. And he was upset in a happy way that things were starting to move forward and there was light at the end of the tunnel. So that's quite a good thing. And that's one of the positive things that I would like to take away from this. Although there's been periods of very extreme darkness, there's also been periods of light, little flashes of light, hope, peace, and just gratefulness. And we've come together as a team. I think in the NHS, that's the biggest thing. We've all come together as a team. We've worked well with each other and we've all been through hard times but made it through the other end. I have appreciated most. Probably, and she might be really chuffed, is the regular contact from my sister. I know that she's doing it on behalf of my niece, but the fact that there's been these regular video calls has been such a highlight for me to just to maintain a connection with my sister and also for my niece and for me to be a part of her life and for her to be a part of mine. I just think it's been really, really lovely. My sister's definitely been the driver of this. I'm not going to lie. She's the one that rings. I'm terrible for for ringing and FaceTiming, but my sister knows that and she overcomes it. And just the fact that I know she, that she wants her daughter to be able to see me regularly so that she doesn't forget me and that she grows up with me, um, even though we can't physically see each other. What I have appreciated the most was having a job. So I currently work in education and I used to work in events management and I know that's an industry that's really suffering from the pandemic with lots of my friends on furlough, some of my friends being made redundant and I actually really, really appreciate my job. I haven't had any cutbacks or any money losses for me and a, quite a supportive team that I'm within, which because my mental health has suffered because of my personal life, I've really appreciated having a good, strong manager that's there to kind of got my back whenever I needed to take time away. I've appreciated most the chance to slow down, spend more time with my children that is more incidental, less planned, just sort of relaxing into daily and evening routines, knowing that you can't really go anywhere. So just sort of going with the flow. And, I, and I've quite enjoyed that. Hello, my name is Veronica. I live in the north of England with my husband. I've appreciated most um, the support of my husband and the fact that we've been able to spend more time together than we have for a long time, because I've been working from home and he's retired now and we've really got to, to spend a lot of time together which has been much appreciated. I found lockdown difficult because again an easy one but I've just been unable to physically see my family since September last year. Not being able to embrace my parents and my sister has been a massive struggle especially when I can see that my mum and dad are having detachment issues from me that I know that they are finding it really, really difficult and that makes it even harder. I think I found the first two lockdowns living on my own very difficult just to, you know, I have a job where I meet a lot of people, I speak to a lot of people I used to, that changed dramatically in lockdown where we were just uh, speaking over computers and, and using old pictures and I, I'm quite a sociable person, I like seeing friends. In the pub, I used to like going to the to the rugby club. I've always had a lot of people around me, um, and I didn't like spending so much um, time on my own. Really, I think if I hadn't had the dog, and <laughs> hadn't I had somebody to kind of look after and keep uh, fed and walked and busy, I think I would have found it a lot harder. And I think I would have found it a lot harder if I'd have been locked in my own house. 23 hours a day like some people were. I was very fortunate that my job, uh, as things eased slightly, allowed me to get out a lot more than a lot of other people and and still see a bit of, of the area and of other human beings. One of the things I found difficult with lockdown was the fact that we couldn't see our friends, we couldn't go out. I think as a nurse, you use going out as a bit of an escape from all the stresses that you have during the work time. You go out and you meet your friends, even if it's just for a cup of coffee. Um, because nurses work shifts, they tend to go out for coffee 
or on a night time, they go out for a drink or a meal. Um, and not being able to do that was quite difficult. So I found that quite a strenuous thing uh, and it was hard to adjust to. But I got out in other ways by just walking the dogs and getting fresh air. I found that very helpful. And certainly when you walk, uh, you do think you you can be anywhere. You can be in the south of France. You can be in Australia. You can be anywhere you want to be as you just walk along the road with the dogs. Uh, even in the cold and the snow, it still worked. My lowest moment was... This is pretty easy. I was suffering from COVID over the Christmas period. The fact that I was isolated to a single room in our apartment and not being able to spend Christmas with my loved ones. Losing my taste and smell was really, really tough because even though I was really ill, my appetite actually didn't go anywhere. So I knew I had to eat and drink, but it was just really a tick box exercise. I also found it really difficult not to be able to exercise regularly, um, especially the fatigue that was sustained for quite a long period of time after I had COVID, I found a real challenge. My lowest moment was being unable to be with my wife during labour of our first child. Due to restrictions, I recall sitting out in the hospital car park, worried about the well-being of my wife and also of our future son, Alby. Whilst I was able to be called in to witness the birth of our first child, I do feel a little bit robbed of one of life's most definitive moments and not being able to be there to support my wife throughout the process of labour and her time in hospital. My lowest moment was my dad passing away. Um, he died at the beginning of the pandemic last April and it was during the first lockdown and it was during the time when new, no one knew how long we were going to be in this situation and how long that COVID would last. Losing someone's really hard anyway, but during a time when it's not okay to touch people or, and it wasn't okay to grieve properly, like I couldn't even go and say bye to him and couldn't even go and see my mom or see my family. Um, there was no proper funeral because of limited numbers of social distancing. And um, yeah, that actually really sucked quite a lot. Um, so that I would say was my lowest moment. One of my lowest moments was when I nursed a man who had no family and was dying of COVID-19. Full PPE, very difficult to communicate with when you've got a mask and a visor on. All you can do is hold a hand, even though touch isn't out of the question because you have gloves on. That was quite a sad experience for me. Um, but I stayed with him because there was no one else. That really brought sort of the pandemic to life and how the disease is spread amongst the elderly, the sick, the very vulnerable. And that was quite a sad time for me. What is my positive takeaway from the pandemic? Oh, this is a tricky one. I don't think I've taken much positive away from going through the lockdowns and, and working through them. I think it's been pretty bleak in terms of, of, of how life has been for, for everybody. But um, I think people's capacity for, for kindness, seeing firsthand through work and, and watching the television, people like Captain Tom and people who volunteered to, to help those less fortunate. I think times like this bring out the best and the worst in people. And I think we've seen a lot of the best as well as some pretty difficult things. I think my most positive takeaway is the capacity so many people have to look at adversity and think about what they could do for other people rather than trying to take the uh, I'm all right, Jack, bring up the drawbridge mentality of some of the uh, panic buyers. But I think a lot of people have, have really shown the best of themselves during this time. Hi, I'm Steph White. I live in Reading with my husband, Adam, and my two children, Sebastian, who is three and a half, and Lyra, who is a pandemic baby born right at the start of the pandemic in April 2020. 
I am a GP registrar, which means I'm one year from being a full GP. And I, in my spare time, coach Team GB dodgeball and play competitively uh, for a local team as well. My most positive takeaway from the pandemic was definitely a really nice Domino's meteor pizza. No, I'm just joking. Um, my most positive takeaway from the pandemic has been that I can do anything, really. I know it sounds a little bit ridiculous to say that if I can survive having a baby in a pandemic, then I can survive anything. But I do feel that way. I didn't think before having children that it would be this hard. I didn't think that it would be my greatest achievement. But actually, having children is really tough. It's really worth it and you do get a lot back, but you don't feel that every day, particularly when you've got a toddler screaming at you and a baby crying and you don't have a clue why. And I found it intensely harder than my first maternity leave. I really, really commend first time mums because I definitely couldn't have done this first time round. I really think that getting through this with minimal support, obviously a lot of support virtually and on the phone, has been really difficult and I am very proud of myself for managing. Hello, my name is Ian Reid and I am the Head of Participation and Learning for an arts and heritage charity called Lakeland Arts. That's based in the Lake District and I live just below the Lake District in a place called Yellen at Conyers. It's difficult, I guess, to take anything positive away from the pandemic. But as an, I say this jokingly, as an undergraduate of science, I think the positives are that we live in such an amazing, to some degree, society that there are these amazingly minded people that can turn their hand to creating a vaccine for something that just springs itself on society. I think I read that they'd already identified the virus early January and had started working on the vaccine in January, which for a lot of us was probably before we'd ever really taken note of what was going on in 2020. So that's really positive. I think, you know, science can often be seen as quite a scary thing because most people don't understand it, but it's hugely positive. The thing I want to see most post-pandemic is um, this is quite a hard one to answer, but I don't think things are going to go back to normal for a very long time or even ever. So it's quite hard to envisage what you want to see. But I think I'd like to see lots of nice independent businesses still being able to be open and thrive. And that's where I kind of want to spend my money um, when we're allowed to. And obviously the pub's reopening, which will be really amazing. And I've still got some things that I need to do with my family following my dad's death, which... It's quite scary because I've put off, not put off, but not been able to do for a year. So there'll be some nice celebrations, I think, that'll happen in the summer. The thing I want to see most post-pandemic is, is that more people make better use of the potential that's provided by social media, the positive potential particularly. And I imagine that uh, now that in the working world we've become more used to virtual communication on a regular basis, then that we will do more of that and people will spend less money, less time and have less effect on the environment by travelling by aeroplane and train when a lot of meetings can be carried out remotely. The thing that I want to see most post-pandemic is change in society and more empathy for one another. I feel that the world that we lived in pre-pandemic was very much individualistic, idealistic and driven too much by greed. Yet lockdown has taught me and I think taught the world that we are essentially an interconnected society. We can change. We have an opportunity to bring forth change, to collaborate, to create new ventures and hopefully create a better, more fulfilling world and society for future generations to inhabit. The thing I want to see most post-pandemic 
is for this amazing support of the NHS to continue. I thought that the Clap for Heroes was really lovely and often brought me to tears, although that could have been postpartum hormones. <laughs> I've really thought that the the generous gifts and and the thanks that everyone has been giving to NHS workers has just been absolutely lovely to hear about. I haven't been at work, so I haven't seen any of this myself, but I've seen the effects it's had on my friends who are working in the middle of a pandemic and have needed little boosts to get them going and keep them keep them working hard. And I really hope that people continue to appreciate the NHS and its workers because as Nye Bevan said, the NHS will last as long as there's folk left to fight for it. And we're very lucky to have such a wonderful health service and such hard working people, which I'm thrilled to be rejoining shortly. Describe your future mantra based on experiences of a pandemic so far. I would say to be more embraceive to life's journeys rather than upset to its natural highs and lows and try and live in the moment where possible. Because it's through the joy of discovery, I would say, is the single most important thing in life. So we shouldn't ever be afraid to discover new things and to spend time putting ourselves in new situations and challenge what we do. So, yeah, I think ultimately there's a lot of hope with regards to the future because COVID will surpass and it, rather than go back to the norm, which I don't think was purpose built for, purpose made for the world in which we occupy at the moment. I think we've got an opportunity to change the world for the better. So that would be my mantra going forward. Learn to say no, learn to tighten the circle, learn to be kind and learn to have boundaries. I think it was such a monumental shift that we are all going to take a little while to readjust back. I don't think we're going to recover. I think it's a collective trauma. And for some people, it has been obviously devastating, beyond belief. Be kind, work hard and be nice to people. That's my future mantra. My future mantra, but it's not mine. And it's not a mantra, but it's a quote. And it's Albert Einstein. And it's along the lines of, we can't solve the problems with the thinking we used when we created them. We have to change who we are so that we don't go back to the situations that put us in this pandemic. And I think that's useful for us to think about the climate emergency, other things right now that are important, like the Black Lives Matter movement, all the different isms that are going on in the world. I, you know, this has maybe given society a big reset button to press. And my hope is that people will now see life not through an individualistic lens, which I think has happened for too long, and that people will see life together. So not apart from, but part of. As a nurse working in a very, very difficult area in the NHS, um, I'd just like to say that we survived and there is always light at the end of the tunnel and everybody out there is just given 100%. Um, certainly all my work colleagues, everybody that I've worked with, we've all come together as a team and I think that's what the NHS stands for and that's what I feel nurses are good at is coming together as a team, working through the problem and moving forward. Thank you for listening to the Purpose Made podcast. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and we look forward to welcoming you back for the next episode. This podcast is brought to you by Purpose Made, a strategic change consultancy supporting people and businesses to navigate the post-pandemic global society.